Anthony Blinken couldn't have sung a nicer tune. In Beijing, few are going to have enjoyed the music. In the course of less than 24 hours, the American Secretary of State made time to meet a representative of the Dalai Lama, held discussions on the future of the Quad, and discussed India-United States military cooperation. The United States might have concerns about human rights or democracy in India, but it looks like it's willing to put aside those concerns in the interests of its larger objective of containing China. The question that many in New Delhi are going to be asking themselves though, is do the roseate optics of this visit really match up to the story? The answers to this question aren't as nice as the images today might appear. First, the good news. Even though President Joe Biden's administration has eschewed the loud polemics of its predecessor, it's continued much the same tough line on China. The administration's taken a firm position on Chinese human rights violations against the Muslim religious community in Xinjiang. It's explicitly blamed China for conducting cyber attacks against United States infrastructure. It's even sanctioned Chinese officials and companies over human rights violations. There's some reason, though, to ask just how far the United States is really willing to go to meet India's strategic concerns. For one, plans to significantly expand the United States Navy seem to have been put on ice, at least for now. The United States naval budget doesn't include funding to add any big numbers of combat ships or aircraft to the fleet. That means the United States' ability to contain China's growing naval power in the Indian Ocean and the Pacific will remain static. For India and other countries at the receiving end of Chinese naval power, this is not reassuring news. Secondly, there's the whole process around the United States' withdrawal from Afghanistan. The message from America seems to be that the Biden administration isn't really prepared to commit the resources that are needed for protracted overseas wars. No one knows quite what the implications of this might be, but many Asian countries who have been at the wrong end of Chinese power will be asking themselves if they can really count on the United States to provide muscle should push come to shove. Thirdly, many of the United States' closest allies in Europe and Southeast Asia have concerns about any moves that could disrupt their trade relationships with China. Remember, China is among the biggest trade partners for these Asian and European nations. Even though many of these countries are worried about the growth of China's power and Beijing's actions, they aren't willing to risk the huge economic costs that would come with a trade war. The future for the Quad, the alliance of Australia, Japan, the United States and India, will depend ultimately on American action, not American words. As the largest economic and military power in the four-nation grouping, the United States is obviously the backbone of the Quad. Is that backbone as strong as it needs to be? Is the United States really serious about pushing back against China? There's no simple answer to these questions, but New Delhi will be watching and waiting with great care long after this visit is done.